what is going on guys today we are covering blue red blitz yep it's is it blitz so uh i've been testing this deck for a while and honestly i i have to say i was wrong about dragon's rage chandler this card is way more impressive than i thought it was gonna be i Honestly, when I first read the card, I didn't realize it had the Surveil Clause. But the Surveil Clause allows this deck to just chain into spells like no other. So if you play this on turn one or you end up playing two copies by the time you get to turn three, it's very likely you win the game the very next turn or put your opponent in a really bad spot. Because on upkeep, you just fire off spells and try to, try to set up... Um, three spells really easily you're definitely gonna hit delirium it's really not that hard you have a uh, sorcery creature instant um land and artifact it's it, it seemed like it was going to be a really difficult task but with expressive iteration and mistress bobble being like the harder ones to hit if you're able to find one of them you're going to most likely be able to hit uh, delirium making this a 3-3 flyer that has to attack every turn um but yeah i mean the card that's been taken out of this mix is sprite dragon i haven't really missed it that much i think dragon's rage channeler is just like a cheaper more efficient version of the card um but yeah so um i mean the deck is pretty straightforward blue red prowess was the best deck uh before modern horizons 2 came out but now has definitely fallen in power level but dragon's rage chandler has kind of brought it back um i felt like so i've been getting four ones non-stop I, I i was able to get one five oh with it but uh yeah let's jump into some gameplay and see how it plays out all right so we have a pretty broken hand. Here is Dragon's Rage Chandler on turn one. Oh, the perfect draw. Get in for one. Let's see how fast we can kill our opponent. Oh, that's a great draw. That's a fantastic draw. Oh, all right, all right. Counter spell, I see. Don't need that. Don't need that. Get in for a little, little four piece. We put the land in the bin because it gives us one more type. So we have two types. Bounce that back to our hand. We have some interesting choices here. Yep, we're just gonna get rid of the Teferi, get in for one. Play our Soul Scar Mage and pass that turn. And I think this does the best job playing around a board wipe because if they can if they get to keep the Teferi around and plus with the board wipe that just puts us in a really bad spot okay okay it's totally fine we'll leave that one on top And if I land, this gives us four, I mean, four types, get in for six, and then we'll go ahead and pass turn, draw land, not bad. We can beat pretty much everything. Worst comes to worst, we can just vapor snag this back a dragon sh channel her back the main 
soul guide lantern makes things awkward because it is going to erase some damage there'll be a counter spell we'll untap we'll go to combat there goes our delirium we can attack and we should get it here we get to see a lot of cards graveyard one two and we have three in hand let's go and that's game Let's go. Card is absolutely absurd. On to game two. We got some spell pierces. And I think that's all we want. Yep, getting rid of Vapor Snag makes a lot of sense. I could see bringing in some surgicals. Uh, because we can assume that our opponent has Snapcaster. <laughs> and it, it, it might just be like that got him factor. And usually decks like these, like if you hit Prismatic Ending or Path to Exile, you're, you're in a much better position. Ten seems sweet. Island go. That's good news for our Soul Scar Mage. We're gonna play the Bobble and see if we want to keep the card on top or not. It's so worth it to try and hit the land, guaranteed land, because. Um, Metamorphos into Stormwing is is one of those things that you just don't want to pass up on. And now that we have that land, we have the luxury of this Metamorphos into Stormwing. Setting up our third land. Attack for two. Is there a path? Is there not a path? We do have access to 10 points of burn in hand, which is ridiculous. Pairing pa Paired with prowess creatures, that's ridiculous. Two prowess creatures, your lightning bolt is dealing five. All right, expressive iteration goes down. Get in for a nice little seven piece. So now we're just one point off. Oh, go ahead and gain some life. All right, we're putting our opponent in a spot to cast a cryptic command. Cryptic Command, tap our team. We'll go ahead and play our Monastery Swiss Spear, get in for that one point. They're at 12. They're desperately looking for a board wipe. I can't imagine them get, come, getting back into this game without it. But yeah, I mean, Lava Dart's a total bait spell. And the Prowess Triggers represent way more damage than, than the spell itself anyways. So we're not really missing out on anything. All right, Argmage's Charm, not gonna be quite good enough. 
Ooh, path. That is something that's definitely better, but still bad shape. So guy enter comes down. We're just gonna let it resolve. Slam that expressive iteration. Take our land. Go ahead and attack. And we're just gonna play that slow game. Not really walking into anything. Fire off another bolt, snapcaster, gain two life, get hexproof. Sure, they're up to nine. All right, this is where we go for the kill. Metamorphos, red, red, lava dart, bolt face. All right, bolt. I guess we're going to do it at the end of turn. Bolt. Bolt. And All righty, let's talk about the sideboard. So we have a one of island. And that is mainly because of the Blood Moons. Um, the island is definitely a liability uh, pre-board. Uh, your deck is basically a mono-red deck with the exception of uh, tenish spells. But post-board, the island is definitely very necessary uh, because in, the, in those same matchups, uh, you, you are going to need spells like Aether Gust or potentially uh, Threads of Disloyalty. Aether Gust being great against uh, Primeval Titan decks um, as well as Blood Moon. So uh, I think the island is quite necessary if you're going to be playing Blood Moon. Uh, moving on, we have Spell Pierce. I'm still not sure if Spell Pierce is better, better than Mystical Dispute. I've been kind of going back and forth on that. Uh, so far, it's still up in the air. I'm like slightly leaning towards the spell pierces as of right now but i could totally Im imagine switching to mystical dispute because mystical dispute has the possibility and coming in way more matches uh surgical extraction is another tough card it's my graveyard card of choice but i've been thinking that i want to make it into soul guide lantern just the possibility of being able to draw cards is very nice the surgical does pair much better with like Stormwing Entity. So I'm also on the fence about this card. Aether Gust is a slam dunk, good against Primeval Titan decks as well as um, the Mirror Match. So uh, I'm definitely going to be playing some copies of this. I love a Braid. Um, maybe Shattering Spree is better right now, but I think a Braid's flexibility is definitely worth it. But I'm going to reconsider, see where the rest of the meta ends up before I make my final decision. Dragon's Claw, it's the mirror killer, so you have to keep it. And Threads of Disloyalty is definitely my, like, card to steal other people's creatures of choice. Mainly because it's an enchantment and it costs one less than uh, its other similar cards. Um, Threads of Disloyalty has been absolutely great in getting rid of cards like Core Firewalker, so uh, I'm definitely going to be keeping those in. Blood Moon, absolutely excellent card. I think your land hate should, should be good against Amulet, and if it's not, then you're playing the wrong type of land hate. So Blood Moon is my land hate of choice, and yeah, that is the sideboard. Um, if you are not 
subscribed to the channel please hit that subscribe button like the video and uh yeah make sure you check the description because i put sideboard guides in them for all of our videos so make sure you check that out and i'll see you guys next time thank you